Hello, welcome to the Critical Move Hotel Sur. Two sovereign nations of the Middle East are close to each other, and they do so despite the siege of Western powers. One, victim of severe sanctions by the U.S. The other, the scene of a military conflict due to the influence of terrorist groups financed by the White House and its allies. About the strategic collaboration between Iran and Syria we talk about today. Let's deploy the board. It starts the first move. On July 9, President Bashar al-Assad expressed his satisfaction with the results of the meetings between Syria and Iran, based in Damascus, and the signing of the military and technical cooperation agreement, which embodies the level of their strategic relations. Let's hear reactions in the context of the opening of this pact. A comprehensive military security agreement was signed to promote military and technical cooperation in different fields of the armed forces of these two countries that are friends and brothers. The agreement is also aimed to improve in coordination between the parties to face the growing dangers of tech-free terrorism supported by international and regional governments. These meetings discussed the latest developments in Syria and the need for the withdrawal of all foreign armed forces that entered the country illegally was emphasized in the international regulations. The people of the region are not interested in the continued presence of the United States here. The Islamic Republic of Iran and the Syrian Arab Republic have taken the decision to boost cooperation, especially on defense, military and security matters, as well as to increase their power and deterrence from now on. We will make further progress toward that goal. If anyone has placed their hopes in the destruction of this relationship between Syria and Iran, they are gravely mistaken and should give up those dreams. The moment this agreement is signed is so important as it takes place amidst continuous and growing pressure from the U.S. against Syria. So it sends a clear message of support to the Arab country in all areas, and not only on a military level, but also in the face of the blockade imposed on Syria by Western countries led by the United States. This agreement expresses the determination of these allies to stand up to any foreign aggression and to respond decisively to any violation on Syrian sovereignty, as well as to consolidate the joint struggle against the illegal military presence of foreign troops who steal the natural resources of the Syrians and prevent the reconstruction of the country. On July 8, Iran and Syria signed an agreement on military and security cooperation. What is this pact about? Let's review. The document was signed in Damascus by the Syrian Minister of Defense, Major General Ali Abdullah Ayyub, and the Chief of Staff at the Armed Forces in Iran, Major General Mohamed Bakhari. The party attested to their willingness to continue joint coordination in order to face common dangers and challenges with the fight against terrorism, supported by regional and international powers, being the main objective. The pact includes commitments for logistical, technical and military support among the armed forces of these nations. Brigadier General Bakari declared that they will go to strengthen the Syrian air defense systems. Regarding the presence of the U.S. Army in the Arab nation, he added that neither the people nor the states of the region approve of Washington's military intervention in Syria. Regarding recent leaks about the possible withdrawal of Iranian forces from Syrian territory, the officials said that they stay in the Arab country is based on the request of the legitimate Syrian government to defend its sovereignty. Bagheri added that Syrian Arab army forces have reacted strongly against recent Israeli air attacks. I invite you to check some digital information to update and see in what context this strategic alliance between Syria and Iran is being signed. For example, Ahmadjadeen on July 14 
Protests continue in Syria against Turkish and U.S. occupation. Hardly a day passes in Syria without a protest or an act of resistance to the U.S. occupation forces illegally present in the country, reported Sana. In a demonstration of rejection, villagers in the town of Rashawa in Kimshili municipality, northeastern province of Hashalkeh, protested against the U.S. occupier and expressed their repudiation and outrage of the illegal foreign presence in Syria. They also burned U.S. flags and raised national flags and banners, demanding the departure of the occupying troops and denouncing their plundering of Syria's natural wealth. They also denounced the blockade and unjust sanctions imposed on Syria. On the other hand, Sana also reported the death of two children as a result of the explosion of a mine planted by terrorists in Dera. According to the correspondent of the Syrian agency, the event occurred in the city of Sheki Meskin. The mine also caused injuries to two civilians. Another media, Hispan TV, Syria, terrorists who are supported by the West use chemical weapons on July 14. Damascus rejects the OPCW's politicized resolution against it and points out that those who are chemical weapons in Syria are terrorists supported by the West. The Syrian Foreign Ministry on Monday condemned the resolution adopted against it during the 94th session of the Executive Council of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons because of pressure and threats for certain Western countries, especially the U.S., U.K., and France. This dangerous and unprecedented action goes beyond the OPCW's mandate and attempts to politicize its work as well as make it hostage in the hands of non countries that impose their political agendas, the Syrian Foreign Minister said in a statement. The Syrian Ministry of Foreign Affairs has criticized the provision, which is based on false conclusions drawn by the legal investigation and identification team controlled by the aforementioned Western country. Syria condemns the use of chemical weapons and at the same time rejects the campaign of lies launched against it by the U.S., France, the U.K., and other Western countries, straight the Syrian foreign ministry, adding that it is already known that the fabrication of chemical weapons are the work of terrorist gangs, including the self-proclaimed white helmets, supported by the West. The Syrian government, headed by Bashar al-Assad, has repeatedly denied having launched chemical attacks against its people and has accused several Western countries under the tutelage of Washington of staging these attacks to, this, to tense the situation and justify their military interventions in Syria. Damascus is the target of these unfounded accusations, even though it's joined the OPCW in 2013 and in 2014 fulfilling its responsibility as a member, handed over its chemical arsenal. The OPCW confirmed in 2016 the total destruction of the Arab country's chemical arsenal. Let's update more information with our correspondent Hisham Wanus from Damascus, Syria. Hello, kind greetings to all of our viewers. Uh, the chief of staff of Iranian armed forces, Major General Mohammad Hossein Bakari, and Syrian Defense Minister Alayt General Alayu met on Wednesday, July 8, in Syria's capital, Damascus where they signed a comprehensive military agreement which calls for measures to increase collaboration between the two countries, which will address security and stability in the region. In this pact, both parts have agreed to exchange their experiences in several areas, such as the fight against terrorism and extremism, in addition to providing logistical, technical and military support between the Iran and Syria armed forces. Iran clarified that through this bilateral agreement, it plans to help Syria and strengthen its air defense, and that its mutual cooperation aims to counterattack the pressure from the United States, ensuring that the countries in the region will no longer tolerate the presence of foreign troops, especially from the United States, and they will respond to any movement of the enemy. 
At the same time, by sending this memorandum, Tehran intends to send two important messages to the regime of the Zionist entity in Israel. First, that they will go and the request of the Syrian government will remain in Syria's territory, and the attacks by Israel will not change this fact. The second is they will go and their allies are capable of attacking Israeli targets from the Syrian territories. So this agreement is an opportunity to recite Israel's attacks on Syrian military installations. So both countries agreed to strengthen Syria's air defense systems to counter these aggressive and illegal attacks. After the signing of the agreement, the head of the Syrian defense said that the special strategy of military cooperation between Syria and Iran is linked to the present and future of the region, and that it will continue and include these areas despite the escalation of pressures and threats by the Western powers led by Washington. The president of Syria, Bashar al-Assad, has honored the collaboration of the two countries in the fight against terrorist groups in the Arab country and in the hostile policies of certain regional and western countries and emphasized that the strategic military agreement signed with Iran is the result of many years of cooperation. This is all the information so far. Back to you in the studio. Thank you so much. Uh, let's take our first break in our critical move. Remember, there is a strategic move in social media for you to participate with us. What message does Iran send to the West, especially to Israel, a faithful U.S. ally in the region, with the recent signing of a technical military cooperation agreement with Syria? Leave your opinion. Let's take a short break. Since we are dealing with this issue on our geopolitical board, how about if we review in context how the links between Syria and Iran have developed? The close ties between Syria and Iran date back to the 1979 Islamic Revolution. Damascus was one of the first states to call for a strong relationship with the emerging political order in Iran and the first Arab country to recognize the new government of the Persian nation. Bilateral ties have developed on the basis of respect for national sovereignty, the continuation of the fight against terrorism, and the search for ways to stabilize the arm of the region, are today among the main objectives of the strategic links. Over the years, Syria and Iran have strengthened their ties in the economic, financial, military, cultural, industrial, scientific, and, above all, security fields. Collaboration in the fight against terrorism has been consolidated amidst the threats from the West and Israel. The presence of the Iranian army in Syria, based on the decision to the president's government Bashar al-Assad in the context of the war against terrorist organizations in localities such as Idlet and Aleppo. Syria and Iran are today part of the axis of tension between the United States. Both nations are resisting the coercive measures applied by the White House, which seriously affect their economies and have been intensified fight since the arrival of Donald Trump to the presidency. President al-Assad was among the first leaders to condemn the assassination of Iran's Revolutionary Guard leader, General Qasem Soleimani, by a U.S. attack in Iraq in January this year. General Soleimani played a major role in the heavy fighting in Iraq and Syria against terrorist groups, many of them backed by the Israeli regime and Western countries. 
We start the analysis. We have from Argentina Jorge Cranes, journalist, expert on Middle Eastern issues. Jorge, as always, it's very nice from our side to have you in our analysis. We have today on the geopolitical board this connection more consolidated between Syria and Iran. Above all, in an aspect we could say that brings somehow the forces, the sovereignty of both nations, it has to do with the security and military matter. This brings a very clear message for all the nations, even around them, beyond the seas. That is right. Hugs uh, and greetings to you and tell us your viewers. This is a global tension. This is not only a Middle East tension, a cooperation of countries that are going through harsh situations because of the aggressions they suffer, for instance. The United States sanctions a lot of these countries, which are not sanctions because the United States has not right to sanction anyone. And these unilateral coercive measures that affect economy and stability of these nations. So a technical military agreement between Syria and Iran, in this moment, it's a very important factor for the stability of the region. And also, it's a very clear sign from the United States to Israel, who supports these terrorist groups that are still acting there, and also in the neighboring Iraq. So it is very important to take into account this. And the memory of General Soleimani is watching over this cooperation between Syria and Iran. It is something very important, not only as a symbol, but also as the example he leaves for these countries to cooperate facing the efforts that from Washington they do and from Israel to divide these nations and all the people who are trying to have independency policies. So it is very important and interesting and also as an example to other regions who are also suffering these aggressive tendencies. And this agreement that Tehran and Damascus have signed in recent days. Since you mentioned the memory of General Soleimani, I remember that early this year, when that tragic assassination took place to the general, the response of the Persian nation was that there was going to be a revenge against the author of this assassination. And in other words, they said that the revenge was going to be around the expulsion of all foreign troops, especially U.S. troops, out of the region. So I wonder if this consolidation between Syria and Iran in military and security matter is part of this Iranian revenge against U.S.? Yes, it's a purpose of revenge that we could say that is in search of justice facing the terrorist facts we are talking about. U.S. forces, mercenary forces, terrorist forces are acting and in Syria, also still in Iraq, not too long ago, and an unit of Syrian army order to step aside from a region of the, some U.S. unit there in the region. And that is truly something that cannot be accepted. Uh, some certain press at an international level presents as something that is normal, that U.S. military troops are still acting on Syrian territory and even supporting terrorist forces that attack the government of the legitimate government of the country. So this is a very important data. And I wish this can be something positive on their Arab country. 
and may bring a bigger confrontation with the policy of Netanyahu and Donald Trump in this moment in that region. In these images we are playing, we can see, for example, Russian flags. Iran is adding to the anti-terrorist struggle that Russia has been already taking place in this territory. So. I think that is correct. Air, Russian Air Forces, as a result of the agreements they have with the Syrian government, has been success, successful the airspace of that country, has dominated the airspace in cooperation with the uh, Syrian Air Forces strategically fundamental to the defeat of the Islamic State, that terrorist group that is already retreating. And therefore, in Moscow, probably there is a satisfaction for this agreement between Iraq and Syria. And this allowed to in a way that Iran and Syria may resolve one of the, these issues without necessity of cooperation of Moscow. And that is something that we have to value and never stop pointing out that in this moment Russia, even though it's not signing this agreement, an agreement that is only between Syria and Iran, we cannot forget the extraordinary role that played to defeat terrorism and imperialist plans, specifically the air forces of Russia. And this agreement, it signed right in the context where Syria denounced the participation of Western powers to the time to issue the inform by the prohibition of chemical weapons. This is a politicized inform and influenced by pressures by Western powers. Let's remember participation Syria has had in the center of OPAC. We remember in 2016, it gave up the military weapon. And now we see that there was presence of chemical weapons in Syrian territory. And those who possess those chemical weapons are precisely terrorist groups financed by, Ox by West Western. That is correct. There is a dispute in the United Nations and their organizations. And it happens that some powers, such as the case of United States and in other situations, UK and France, have used some of these organizations as the chemical nuclear weapons, the one you were talking about, to answer to some interests. And certain organizations of the United, United Nations have a big campaign against, uh, for example, we have to talk about the withdrawal of the United States from no more, no less, the World Health Organizations in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic. So they are using to its favor these organizations. It's not a surprise at all. And it is very important that the countries facing these agreements that come to strengthen their capacity of resistance and the uh, use of all the resources and the influence on the OPAC in this case to develop their policies, aggressive policies against the sovereignty of the countries. Very important that you mentioned the topic of the coronavirus pandemic because both of these countries, Syria and Iran, are fighting against this pandemic in their territories, but we can see that they cannot lose sight of the security matter and military matter 
So therefore, they are facing the battle from several sides, sovereignty from several sides, from health, from health arrangements and also from military sides. Yes, their resistance must, must be in many ways because um, there are we have to see the internal condition of each of these countries. Inside, we have to include terrorist groups because they are financed and they depend on foreign. And it's also the matter of health and also maintain the policy and fulfill the respective and supporting the, the economy of these countries in the midst of unilateral measures of the United States that mainly affects the possibility of exporting, of, I'm sorry, important, important elements that affects the economies of these countries. And also as Latin Americans, we all know the cases of Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and others. So it is it is good to understand that this kind of illegal unilateral measures that are taken to affect the economies under normal course of the developing of these countries occur in the Middle East as well as in our Caribbean and Latin American region. Jorge, thank you so much for your reflections for the critical move for Telesur. See you soon. Thank you. And thank you for all the viewers of Telesur. Thank you. Jorge was with us. Let's take another break in a critical move. Remember, there is a strategic move in social media for you to participate. What message does Iran send to the West, especially to Israel, a faithful U.S. ally in the region? With the recent signing of the Technical Military Cooperation Agreement with Syria, stay with us. We'll be back soon. We are talking about Syria and Iran today. Let's put these two allied nations on the geopolitical map. Iran and Syria, the strategic references of the Middle East. Syria and Iran are two sovereign countries in the Middle East, separated geographically by Iraq. The Islamic Republic of Iran, cradle of the Persian Empire since the first millennium before our era, is of great geopolitical importance because of its location in Central and South Asia. It is bordered by Pakistan and Afghanistan to the east, Turkmenistan to the northeast, the Caspian Sea to the north, Azerbaijan over Armenia to the northwest, Turkey and Iraq in the Kurdistan region to the west, and the Persian Gulf and Gulf of Oman to the south. Its capital and political, cultural, commercial and industrial center is Tehran. It's one of the largest countries in the world, with an area of 1,648,195 square kilometers. Iran possesses great hydrocarbon reserves while controlling the Strait of Orms, an narrow sea passage that connects the Persian Gulf with the Indian Ocean and through which transits a third of the oil consumed in the world. Due to the sanctions imposed by the United States, the Persian nation's oil exports have been affected. Its army, with defense and the Iran capabilities among the third more powerful in the world, is a founding member of the Organization for Islamic Cooperation and the The Syrian Arab Republic, born on the Arameans in the former Mesopotamia, shares its northern border with Turkey, to the east with Iraq, to the south with Israel, Jordan and the Galilean Sea also to the south, and with Lebanon to the west, its shores are washed by the waters of the Mediterranean Sea, with an area of 185,180 square kilometers. Its capital is Damascus and its most populous city, Aleppo. The Arab nation is in the midst of a war provoked by Western powers since 2011, which has hit the country territorially and economically despite the immense wealth it possesses in its subsoil such as asphalt, rock, salt, oil, phosphates, and natural gas. Son of Syrian's crude oil is found in territories controlled by the Daesh of self-named Islamic State, which is why the country did not surpass before 2017 the 8,000 barrels per day, even though it has received 
reserves close to 2.5 billion barrels. With the recovery of the industrial centers of Aleppo, Derisor, and Guterin, a slow renewal of industrial strength can be observed, especially from the beginning of 2018. Despite having different political systems, Iran is a theocratic state, while Syria is a secular state. Both nations have close cooperative ties with common enemies, the United States and Israel. Both Syria and Iran are members of the United Nations and the non-aligned countries movement both defend the sovereignty and self-determination of peoples. Owner of the fourth largest proven oil reserves in the world and brand among the top gas reserves in the world, Iran has gained prominence in the Persian Gulf. Let's put it in context. Iran is the second largest producer of the organization of oil exporting countries, OPEP, after Saudi Arabia. It also shares with Qatar the largest gas field on the planet, the South Pars North Dome. In terms of trade relations, the Persian nation is a key player in the Middle East, as it has solid relations with Russia and has the support of Europe after the unilateral withdrawal of the United States from the nuclear agreement. Iran's geopolitical influence grows stronger as it becomes an important center center of communication between the Middle East, Central Asia and South Asia. Its proximity to commercial routes such as the Strait of Orms, where nearly 20% of the world's oil transits, the Suez Channel, the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Oman position it as a strategic enclave. Recently, the Iranian government announced their discovery of oil reserves of great importance in the area. The discovery aroused the interest of Western powers. Tehran is also an important player in China's strip route project. A strategy that would generate major changes in geopolitics, as experts say its developed could end U.S. economic dominance through trade in national currencies rather than dollars. The Islamic Republic has spoken out against U.S. interference in the Persian Gulf area, has made it clear that it does not seek tension, but rather to ensure its territorial integrity in the face of any aggression. In the interest of preserving security in the waters of the strategic Strait of Ormuz, the Persian Gulf and the Sea of Oman, President Hassan Rouhani proposed last September before the United Nations General Assembly the creation of a peace coalition with nations in the area and without foreign forces, according to the Iranian military authorities, the security of the Strait of Hormuz and the Persian Gulf can only be guaranteed by establishing cooperation between coastal countries and not with post coalitions. In the same line, Tehran has rejected the presence of the so-called naval coalition led by the United States in the Gulf and initiated in November last year. Significant are the links it has established with in Latin America, as in particular with the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. These two nations have strengthened their political and commercial relations in the midst of an illegal economic, commercial, and financial blockade that both are suffering at the hands of the Trump's administration. We will continue the analysis in our critical move. Both of them from Lebanon, and both of them are friends. Friends of Telesur. I'm talking about Wafika Ibrahim, advisor on Latin American affairs in the Mayadin Satellite Network, and Isabel Frangil, lawyer, expert of Middle East Affairs. Welcome, both of you. Wafika, I'm going to ask you the same question that I'm going to ask later to Isabel, to know your opinion beyond the geostrategic we were observing what significant geopolitical has this recent agreement between Syria and Iran. Hello, Ray. Hello, Isabel. Also, my sister from Lebanon and also from Venezuela. Reality, this agreement already signed no more than less by head of the state and also with the minister recently came to bring out the truth about all rumors that talk about some distance between Tehran and Damascus, and especially in the midst of both countries are under 
uh, under big sanctions y, uh, and divisions and, and escalation uh, from the United States in, esta region, in this uh, region, ambos países, surrounded both countries, conflictos, surrounded by uh, conflicts created by the U.S. policy Golfo, against the Gulf, Iraq, Iraq uh, Syria, and Libano is destabilizing Libano, practically. Uh, in some media, including the pressure that is made to recover the government formula of first minister, and also a lot of pressure against this new government, and also economical, and the valuation of the currency had destroyed in a significant way this Iranian step. It came at the right time. Also with the rumors that says that Damascus was going to accept pressures and was going to bend over uh, the pressures uh, by fearing the hunger they tried to impose through these sanctions and put a limit to the links between their Iranian influence by staying on the east of the Euphrates and not helping one way or another that this does not go beyond the Euphrates to the Mediterranean coast. Also, this agreement came to, to bring out the analysis of Western media and also U.S. that spoke about a serious contradiction between Russia and Iran about Syria, especially they said that Russia was going to upset and work and somehow to upset in, in exchange of other proposals that were going to be given to Russia. This step, of course, has other dimensions. The, this, in spite of strengthening the relations between Iran and Syria, also strengthen other areas of the U.S. war does not limit only to the military part, also the economic part. It's a total war with all the sense that goes beyond what it, to what is uh, economical pressures and the hunger they're trying to impose to these people. It's a multidimensional war and based on that concept of multidimensional war. I'd like to introduce in this dialogue to Isabel that is with us from Venezuela. Isabel, who also has been a victim of a multi functional war by the United States. Well, of course, the, we are talking about one area that we can see the interests of the econo international economic power that has under its purposes. And we're talking about strategic geopolitical purposes. Through the, through the old times or up to our days, in our world today, in all the plans, strategic, military, up to political alliance between axles, multipolar axles. They all have been changed. The hegemonic policy of the United States and its allies, we can see that it's been limited after the war in Syria. That is, that the war in Syria has been like a door to a new world that it's, it's grown up. And it's been facing this new policy before the management of the United States in the Middle East. That is that today it's seen. It seeks a force that dare to break barriers that was around from Syria and going through all axles 
to Yemen, to Venezuela, and after Venezuela it crossed five seas, and it dared with bravery to say that there is no more a unilateral decision from the United States and its imperial allies. Now, this axis has, uh, has made an echo. We saw the, the behavior of Venezuela. We have seen it uh, from China to Iran, and we, have, we are seeing it also from Iran from to Lebanon and to Syria. Breaking the joke, breaking that blockade, and everyone is knowing it inside the, the political and geopolitical that today is a new terrorism that is like an economic terrorism. And what Syria is watching today is the support and support that strengthened from Tehran to Syria. And we are watching it to up to all levels, as my friend Wafi said. It's solidifying more this axis with this technology, military, and economical between Syria and Iran. And we are also watching the role of Iran in this. And this decision. We are talking about take to level this correlation of levels, political forces, the bravery, the clarity. After the war in Syria has accomplished uh, to maintain a world that somehow it's in a balance when it comes to decision and when it comes to sovereignty and when it comes to world acting, living a, a stand up to the United States in this Isabel. political chess. Thank you so much. Stay with us for another more minutes. Well, Fika, a few minutes ago, you were talking about something very important that has to do with regional context, where it emerges this strategic cooperation agreement comes to take place. We see the situation which Lebanon is going through. If we go more to the south, we can see Yemen that hasn't recovered yet of this war. It has been going through, and we wonder ourselves how much um, could bring not only to the bilateral relation between Syria and Iran this agreement, also by to go beyond to a regional level with a clear message to the state of Israel, among other powers that wanted to boycott, boycott the development of this sovereign nations. Exactly. Exactly started to the point where my friend is about preach. The pressure is what the United States is looking for. It's like a vicious circle. It's a violent circle that goes to impose in this region. It's like if you prepare, one day you get more aggressive. But if you don't get ready, then we invade you and we get our way. It's like a never-ending story by the United States. It's the way, it's the policy they impose on our people. For instance, now, this agreement, I am pretty sure, and this analysis lead us to the United States is going to get more aggressive with this agreement. Why? Because this agreement between both countries, what it does is to destroy the plan that they have bet on, that the United States has bet on Syria. And since they haven't been able during this, all these years, they're trying to reach other ways to consolidate more this situation. So what does the United States do? They go to Iraq. They are destabilizing Iraq. There are assassination. Nobody knows. It creates conditions like pointing fingers to create a division, in, in, internal division in Iraq. Also in the war of Yemen, this never-ending war, also in Lebanon. And on the other hand, this situation also will take Iran to support even more its allies in the region and 
it's friends. We're talking about a popular mobilization, for instance, and other parties and forces. Many forces that are the axis of the resistance. And also, they're going to keep supporting even more the Syrian government, of course, led by the president. And so far, he is the president, he is the, leg the legality that represents Syria. And also in Yemen, it's going to continue to support him. So now, in my opinion, this can push the United States to exercise more pressure and also to reach a military aggression through in a direct intervention and creating an, an, an instability and intervening in a direct way in the north as northwest region of Syria where we are watching every day um, penetrations from the U.S. forces that comes from Iraq to this area and they support the democratic Syrian democratic forces they are loyal to Washington there and also the possibility that the United States gives green light to the Zionist unit when they see that all the calculations went wrong and they were not able to open a war against Syria to push Iran to get out. Because the center, the strategic objective right now for the United States is to enter and to withdraw the Iranian influence and for this Zionist entity. The Zionist entity felt so much more free to do their move. But now, of course, with this objective, and with all the things the United States have done to impose the deal of the century and also finish the Palestinian cause and to uh, offer Palestinian people look what a way to humiliate a whole people something that is called alternative homeland what? in a third world in a third country to transfer to what? And all the others outside who has no right. So they have not been able to take over Syria, and Syria won't accept this situation. So what's going on? What's going on is that the United States is going to an escalation to attention. It's going to try to divide even more our countries into many states different countries to turn them us who, Arab countries who are majority to turn us all of us into a minority into a minority which is a major that is the end this is Zionist entity it's a very complex so it is like also the United States and also Israel state doesn't take into account something you were talking about and something also Isabel was talking about and it has to do with the word Axis. Isabel, we're talking about an axis of resistance, but you were also talking about uh, the called geopolitical axis with other factors come into place, such as China, which has had um, corporations in other areas. Is that right? Ray, we are talking about that there is a world, it's a dying world at all levels. We are talking about an axis inside after the fall of the Soviet Union. The last during a decade has been exercising a hegemonic policy um, of political decisions in the world. More specifically, we are talking of Middle East. Now, this skeleton, uh, this dying skeleton, United States, which supports Israel directly, in my opinion, it's in a position we can say that less favorable than before. And on the other side, these axles that are emerging at an economic level from India, we're talking about Russia, China, South Africa, 
Cerco y a nuestro, uh, eje Brasil. And also Entonces, we're talking about Brazil that comes, comes back to our lado, axis and on the other hand, also geopolitical eh, direct interest de, uh, de Rusia, que Siria of Russia, para Rusia, that el único, Syria represents eh, to Russia the only channel to the Mediterranean, decir, that means that the United States has tried with this ally to, to surround Russia economically and geographically. So the interests play come along together in this political chess. These elements affect directly also the military geopolitical interests in the oil plan as it is the Russian interest in the Syrian coast, in the Lebanese coast, and it's an exploring actor of gas or oil. We're talking about China, where there is an economic, very important economic alliance that offers infrastructures to those countries, and we are talking about of, an, for example, Iran, that is a defending entity in the Middle East. These axles are, are provoking and are preserving the fundamental principle and main principle of all democratic principles, which is the, the right to the independency and self-determination. Based on these violated principles that Israel has a bloody arm of the United States in the Middle East, the United States have formed two sides in the world. These die inside, and there is this other side which is standing up as an axis, as an axis, powerfully and breaking, breaking the joke, the economical joke and terrorist from the U.S. And we will see how step by step is going to be imposed this second axis that you described so well. So. I thank you so much, both of you, your, for your time, for our critical move. Hugs. See you soon. Let's go to conclusions. Two nations, out of political will, consolidate their strategic collaboration. Two people seized by imperial whims unite for peace and against foreign intervention. Two Middle Eastern countries say no to terrorism. Two states that send a clear message to the West and its allies in the area. We are pacifists, but if they want war, they will have it. This is how Syria and Iran advance, taken by the hand, two people who reaffirm their historical bonds of brotherhood in good and bad times. For today, we close the geopolitical board.